Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Ratchet and Clank. When we last left off, we would have unlocked every skill point, every god weapon, and completed the game. With 100% of the game. And now we have a large number of things that we can check out as a result. So let's do so, shall we? We're going to first check out with the sketchbook. These are some of the concept sketches for Ratchet. We decided early on that he would be a bipedal alien creature with fur. And if anyone asks you, Ratchet is a Lombax. I think the bottom right one seems to be the one that's closest to what they went with, but it's cool to see. Let's head to the next sketch. Clank went through many forms. He was originally even younger looking with a bigger head and smaller body. In fact, at first Clank was first was three much smaller robots, but in the end we decided to use one so we could develop his personality more easily. That yeah, makes sense. And here we have the final sketch for our main two characters. Ratchet came into existence on paper for the first time within two weeks of the initial idea of the game. This final sketch was done about three months later. That shows all the uh, iteration done on the character, eh? Fort Kronos on Batalia came from the top sketch. We wanted to create forested islands under aerial attack. Then we turned into more of a tropical fort. Kind of the way development goes sometimes. The bottom sketch was one of the many from which we stole pieces for various levels. Ah yes, that can happen too. You can see the resemblance of a tie that air barge there. Here we are. These cliff-hugging structures evolved into the cliffside machinery you could see in parts of the logging site on planet Eudora. They're originally part of a populated city, but we decided to make this a robot-only area. Interesting. This is an element from the robot factory exterior on planet Kwatu. The factory on this planet is where Clank is made at the beginning of the game. That is true. The top sketch is an early drawing of the Blanc Depot on planet Gaspar. The bottom is the production design for Blackwater City on planet Rilgar. Very detailed sketches. The bomb factory on planet Hoven was derived from these sketches. Our original idea that the inhabitants were mining ice and shipping it off world. But then we decided that the Blarg should invade and convert all the processing plants into munitions factories. Blarg equals bad news. This is true. There's some resemblance there. A hanging power source for one of our factories. Can you guess which one? Not offhand to be honest, but it's a doodad that they can use pretty much anywhere. <laughs> the top drawing shows off some early concepts for the logging site on planet Eridora. This is one of our first worlds and our initial goal was to create a forest city. It changed drastically during production. The bottom sketch shows off peaceful structures from the bomb factory on Planet Hoven. I think one of those actually resembles the one that the, uh, the worker was in. Generator concepts for Gorda City on Planet Altanus. Because the city is plagued by lightning storms, the inhabitants use these generators to attract the lightning and convert it into useful energy. Unfortunately, Drink wants the generators for his new planets, and the citizens don't stand a chance. One of the very first levels we prototyped was Metropolis on Panic Kawan. We wanted lots of scenery built into the retro sci-fi buildings to create a unique contrast. We ended up removing most of the bronze caps though, because they began to clash with the rest of the city. It's true, the Metropolis has a really solar punk sort of appearance to it. I quite, I quite like the aesthetic. This world was one of the first big ones we built and almost started a war between the designers and the artists. Mmm. I can see that. This was our first concept for Quark's HQ on planet Umbris. We removed the lightning rods after we realised it made the central structure look too small. The general idea for Quark's HQ is that it should be very reminiscent of a World War II battlefield replete with bunkers machine guns, and barbed wire. I could see that. Here's a building study for one of the structures near Clark's trailer in Blackwater City. We ended up modifying it significantly though and the final result is a bit different. This is a good example of the pilot studies we create for every world. This one was for Fort Kronos on Planet Battalia. We ended up changing the weather from a sunny day to a rainstorm but the color palette didn't vary much from this painting. It's a very beautiful painting. And what I like about this is it shows that 
the process of the game's design uh, starts from the concept art, they sort of work on that a bit, and then they move to making this coloured painting, which then the artists go, okay, that's what this planet looks like. That's what the colour of the trees are, this is what the colour of the grass is, so on and so forth. Very uh, useful to do that. Two examples of the character models we use to model the enemies in the game. The top one is a Blarg Trooper, while the Blarg Commander is on the bottom. Fair enough. We love our robots. These are some of the many head designs we created for the robot troops who fight Ratchet. And if you look closely, you can pick out our animation director and our lead character designer. Hmm. <laughs> I imagine some of them are modeled off of uh, people, it seems. This is Ratchet's first ship. Too bad he wrecks it so early in the game. We wanted it to be a real homemade job, held together by chewing gum and wire. We still can't agree on exactly why he crashed it on planet Novalis. It is a bit of an odd choice, let's be honest. <laughs> Builds a ship, spends all his life doing it, and then just immediately smacks the thing into a cliff wall, but hey. Finish sketches for Quark's ship and the courier ship that Ratchet and Clank acquire. The idea is that the ra courier ship would be a slow, clunky, durable vehicle. Kind of like a mail truck. Quark's ship, on the other hand, was designed as a luxury craft. Not too fast either, but stylish and comfortable. Interesting. This is the original sketch for the Blarg fighter that Ratchet and Clank pick up on Gemlik base. We were going for sleek, but deadly. I think it, I think it works. I think out of all of them, I think the Quark ship is probably my favorite design, but I do really like the, the Starfighter design that they end up picking up. Many of the enemies in the game pilot vehicles. This one turned into a helicopter piloted by a Blarg commander in Metropolis. He's a nasty one. I like how the side of that one says Toyota. <laughs> the grind boots, mind glove, and what was originally the defense drone glove. We changed the way defense drones work midway through the project, so we no longer needed that glove. We actually know this from the game because they still refer to it as the drone glove when you pick up the ammunition. Cool to see the weapon still has a concept data for it. Here's one of our concepts for Giant Clank. Unfortunately, the huge shoulder-mounted guns didn't make it in just because they weren't practical. But we did manage to keep Ratchet on Clank's back. And I do think that's a fun touch. Some fun enemy designs. One of them made it into the game. Four didn't. Can you pick the winner? I'm actually not sure, to be honest. My hunch is the top right one, or the bottom left one. Might be the bottom left one, I think. The many faces of Big Owl. This was the first NPC that we put into the game. He's probably what most people think game developers look like. And they'd be right. One of the weapons that went through many iterations on paper was Ratchet's Wrench. We didn't want something too generic, plus it had to function as a tool and as a weapon at the same time. It's mistakenly called an axe by many, but the label is appropriate in some respects, since you probably wouldn't want to get whacked with it. It's fair. I mean, it's also not fair to call it a wrench either, because it's a spanner. But, you know, details. <laughs> Designs for the Visibomb gun at the top and the Suck Cannon at the bottom. The Suck Cannon was one of the first weapons we designed, and one of the few where the names stayed the same throughout the development process. It just had such a nice ring to it. Hmm. The top two designs are the final versions of the Hydro Pack. The bottom sketches are the designs for the Glove of Doom and the Bomb Glove. The Glove of Doom is an office favourite. Personally, I didn't like it as much, but I could see why it has its fans. Another early version of Ratchet. Notice the different proportions, the lack of eyebrows and stripes. This was also an early box cover concept. This one should look familiar. The cover for the US game box was derived from it. But more importantly, it was the first image of Ratchet unveiled to the world in March 2002. And there we go. That's the sketchbook. Let's look at the epilogue, shall we? Oh, this is, uh, this is uh, images. Details. Ratchet, the furry mechanic who created a panic. Deadly Gadgets, top 10 gift ideas for this holiday season. I was on reverse. 
Race track tragedy claims five robots. The interstellar nosy news washed up. I'd do anything for a few bogs, quark. Candid photos inside. Robot caught in the act. Ratchet's love interest. <laughs> Shocking news about Drek. The race was fixed. Fitness tips from Quark's trainer. Bounty hunters at each other's throat. On the left side, the truth is squicked hooked on nano. Skid hooked on nano. Mmm. Next, heavy artillery. Do you think you could handle the rhino? Interview, victims of the rhino. L upgrades, learn how to get aftermarket parts at an affordable price. I like they actually showed us the, uh, the ammunition for the rhino there. More foray, although the spelling is different. Ends galactic hunger. <laughs> That's not one way to do it. Gadgets of tomorrow. Latest innovations, Vizzy Bomb Review. Top 10 weapons, Gadgetron Con. Popular plumbers. I was about to say popular lumbers, but that's not right. <laughs> 101 ways to clean your pipes. Will plumbing ever be the same? The water worker asks the same question every day. True story. I saved the galaxy from an evil mutated strain of dry rot. I kid you not. Tips to fixing derelict turrets. Hydrogen. Hydrogenator. Zoomerator. Hmm. Prime. Robot of the year. An exclusive look at how Clank saved us all. See what that's referencing there. <laughs> Rita digested and an amoeboid ate her and now she's in love. Oh no. How long is your wrench? Which nanotech do you really need? <laughs> oh dear. The real guard times. Rhino salesman pleads not guilty. Novalis native claims his brother turned into a chicken. Amoeboid attack. Battalia Chronicles. Lone Commander wins war, or so he says. Reinforcements have arrived. What took them so long? Outpost X11 updates. Hover border. The best way to a man's heart is through his ribcage. Win. How Skid gets his extra attitude. Z uh, X4000 sneak peek, killer combos, back breaking moves, zoom a giveaway, free stuff for only $2.99. Homes and Bunkers, the number one official guide to the Umbra system. Bank seizes Quark Estate, auction begins now. New sectors, East Umbra, Central Umbus, Winnieville, South uh, XCB, Blagtown, Third Moon, Umbra Station, Quark District. Ratchet and Clank, the motion picture. It actually did end up happening one day, but it was very different to the story of this game. Hotbots, entertainment for robots. Oil and gears, the best lubrification for your sensitive parts. Top 50 robot actors, turbo twins. Helga's workout plan. CPU overclocks, improves performance and satisfaction. Help Go shows off her servos. Interview of certain type of models. Party at the Hotbot Mansion and Tools Express, extend the life of your wrench. And there we go. <laughs> That's one, one thing. And now we got some videos. The making of. Prepare to be transported to a brilliant sci-fi universe filled with imaginative characters, high-tech weapons and gadgets, and unprecedented action-packed shooting adventure. Welcome to the brave new world of Ratchet and Clank. When we started talking about the ideas behind Ratchet and Clank, this character that rockets from planet to planet with weapons and gadgets, well, weapons suddenly jumped to the foreground. Ratchet lives on a backwater planet out in the edges of the galaxy. He's a tinkerer, loves to put things together and take them apart to see how they work, very curious. He's got this really strong thirst for adventure. And lucky for him, he gets to meet Clank, which allows him to travel to new worlds. And Ratchet and Clank meet each other, but they don't necessarily get along. Ratchet just wants to go out and blow stuff up and have a good time, and, and Clank is 
much more serious about accomplishing his goals. Showcasing an impressive arsenal of state-of-the-art and radical weapons and gadgets, Ratchet & Clank delivers the future of entertainment here and now. When you get weapons in this game, there's such immediate gratification. You can go out and blow the crap out of everything. With the gadgets, we wanted to make sure that there was a lot of different options for the player when they're playing to kind of explore a lot of different ways to kind of cause some havoc and, and, and destruction. There's the Tesla Claw, which uh, shoots a bolt of electricity out, which actually picks characters up and throws them in air, and they explode. You've got the Suck Cannon, which allows you to suck characters in and hold them and fire them back out. The uh, Rhino is an acronym for a Ripia New One and you just stand back, fire that thing, and it destroys anything in its way. I love the Pyrocitor. I'm not sure what that says about me. One of the most unique weapons we have is the Visibomb. It's awfully fun to cruise around the level from the bird's eye view and then target an enemy on the ground and just blow them up. We were really surprised how quickly Ratchet came together. Ratchet started as this really small, scrappy cat type thing. Then kind of a much taller dog-like creature. And what I ended up doing was actually taking these two forms and putting them together. And that's pretty much how we ended up with them. As artists, we've set a really high standard for what we want to achieve in this game. But it, it feels really good to know that programmers, the designers, everybody has set equally high standards. Everybody who comes on board here is excellent at what they do and have really high expectations of delivering excellence. When someone plays an Insomniac game, they, they can see anywhere they look in the game, there's an attention to detail, quality, as well as technical performance that, that is never lacking. Developed by Insomniac Games, Ratchet & Clank is the development team's first entertainment venture for the PlayStation 2. We knew we had to come up with something that was going to raise the bar even farther than Spyro had as far as action platformers went. And that's where Ratchet and Clank came from. We're actually expanding the genre. We're trying to break out of what people typically consider the action platformer or character action game genre. One of the big differences between Spyro and Ratchet is being able to animate this stuff on the PS2. And the single level of this game is probably more art than was in an entire game in one of our PS1 releases. Every single level of the game, we bring forth something new for the player to do. By the fifth or sixth level of this game, we are up to the complexity of the strongest titles in the category. And there's a lot of levels in this game. It's a very deep machine. We've written immense amounts of code and assembly language, probably more than 100,000 lines compared to what we did on the PS1 you know, more by a factor of 10. We can have very rich, detailed environments. We can have lots of enemies attacking you at once um, with their different behaviors. Um, the AI has become more complex. With the faster processor speeds, we can have um, many ships and planes and vehicles just traveling through to breathe life into the environments. There's loads and loads of stuff wherever you look. There's detail, there's movement, explosions. It's a busy world. We're not just creating these environments and expecting them to sit there and expecting people to say, wow, your polygons are so pretty. The point is, it's alive, and there's a lot going on. It's not a static universe. It's an interactive universe, and you interact with it. This game has a lot of great things, art, technology, design, power from the PlayStation 2, but, but the best part of it is you get to blow shit up. <laughs> With a team of talented designers, programmers, artists, and animators, Insomniac Games raises the bar and delivers another captivating game only for the PlayStation 2. When I tell people about what I do for a living, like, that's not work. It's fun. The Insomniacs don't, don't take themselves too seriously, and people love to come to work and, and, and just have a good time, and I think that really is shown in our characters. <laughs> look, plumber's crack. What, what did you just say? I said, look, the plumber's back. All right, wise guy. We, as a company, are committed to giving our games a lot of humor. We use a little bit more sarcasm, and the humor's a little bit more biting. <laughs> With an immense arsenal of gadgets and weapons, innovative gameplay mechanics, and evolving economic system, 
Unparalleled technology and vibrantly detailed graphics, Ratchet & Clank is a galaxy-stomping, adrenaline-soaked masterpiece. We've gone out of our way to make this thing the largest, loudest, most active world we could possibly think of. What Insomniac has done with this game blows my mind every time I see it. Like, I just sit in awe and stare at the, at the visual material and just the all-encompassing feel that this game offers. There are a lot of things that the players have to do, a lot of things that players have to keep in mind, but when it comes down to it, it's really just about blowing up. Blow up a lot of shit. Blow up. I'm blowing shit up. Ratchet and Clank, coming to a galaxy near you. Watching that video makes me think I should have tried to put on my American accent voice for reading out the uh, the sketchbook, eh? <laughs> With that deep hype announcement, like, in a, in a world where there is lots of futuristic aliens. <laughs> Let's see what the TV commercials have to offer us. Oh, we got three ads. I think I remember seeing one ad on TV once for, for Ratchet 2. And I didn't even re realize what it was at the time, but hey, let's, let's watch this. That is Corey. He's helping us with our inflatable decoy test for Ratchet and Clank. Oh, man. The inflatable decoy. One of 36 weapons and gadgets not fit for this world. A little bit dark humor, maybe. <laughs> Let's do the Devastator. Okay, Pete here is going to try to hit hold on, that target with the Devastator, a rocket launcher designed for Ratchet and Clank. Oh, man! <laughs> oh. The Devastator. One of 36 weapons and gadgets not fit for this world. Rated T for team. I think Pete liked the Devastator. What about you? <laughs> Let's try the Morph Array, which of course is actually the Morph O-Ray, but never mind. That is the Morph Array, and that, of course, is Jerry. Uh, the Morph Array is used in Ratchet and Clank to turn your enemies into chickens. No, no, wait, before you do that, just explain to me how it's going to work. Oh, it worked. Jerry's a chicken. Are you sure we can turn him back? <laughs> the Morphere, one of 36 weapons and gadgets not fit for this world. Rated T for T. <laughs> Jerry got wrecked. <laughs> I love that one. One thing I enjoyed too about the making of videos, that just, there are several models in that that just had no textures and they just shoved it anyway. They didn't care. <laughs> that nonetheless though is all of the bonus content. All of this is just rewatching and game stuff. So thank you for watching. Ratchet and Clank is done. I hope that you enjoyed this, the the game. The series will continue, if not immediately in the future. I've I literally have not decided yet. But thank you for watching, and I'll see you whatever comes next right here at Conflux Games. Oh.